three changes that need to happen in Overwatch Tank oh. Edition. Oh. We... oh no, I these are always really spooky. Doomfist. I was going to put Doom in a group of underpowered tanks, but I think he deserves his own segment. How do we go from Doom being one of the best DPS heroes with his uppercut to being moved to tank and nerfed more into the ground than Hog and Mercy? Doom's really good right now. Doom is a hero where either you one trick him and dominate or you get tossed like a Caesar salad. Maybe it's a skill. Okay, that's slightly true. Like the amount of skill Doomfist requires now is insane. What is that a bad thing? Issue, but I don't think it's maybe. It might be. I, I argue sometimes it is. Uh but at the same time though, the Doom players love him, so should take everything I have to kill two supports. My ultimate feels useless. Well, um, there are a lot of Doom players that do prefer old Doom. I understand that, but like, it's just, yeah. I often find myself using it to leave the fight rather than initiate. You get more value out of Doom by pressing left click, but doesn't that defeat the whole purpose behind the name Doom Fist? Number two, Orisa. That's fair. Why the actual f did we buff the horse? 50% damage reduction, a spinning spear that eats all projectiles, Fortify that allows her to walk freely out of most ultimates and a 125 bonus health buff. Not to mention her 720 no scope spear that stops and cancels most abilities in the game. The state of Overwatch is just counter swap until the timer runs out. Those That's true. Months ago, I found I'm out you weren't just a TikTok creator. XOXO heart flatch flatch flatch. He said nine months. Wait, do people actually think that? People people don't think I'm only a TikTok now right uh anyway anyways uh, the point i was gonna make about arisa is unfortunately she's just gonna be constantly number buffed or number debuffed and that's it like she kind of lost a lot of her what's the what, what's the word i don't want to say three-dimensional play it's like her identity i guess like what she would be good at it she shares that identity with other characters now and like counters those characters so like either she dominates them or they dominate her and it's just kind of this small indie company can charge me $10 for an emote and hold their shit excuse for PvE story mode behind a paywall. Number three, Ramatra. As soon as that annihilation comes out, it genuinely feels like someone put a pillowcase First on my head to start after me. Live on I know Twitch. it's nothing Love compared to release day Ramatra. Keep up. This is 16 months. Okay, now I'm getting now I'm getting a little concerned here. But still very annoying. Whenever I see someone play Ramatra, there's uh, hey, uh, uh, sorry, hot take. If you think Ramatra is a giant problem. It, and I mean this wholeheartedly. It is legitimately a skill issue. I hate that phrase now because people have ruined it and hard ruined it at this point. But like, it genuinely is. Like, even when he was better, like a couple seasons ago, and we're not saying like season two good, we're saying like after they nerfed his ultimate, he was still like good, but still beatable. Like, I can tell you as the Ramatra, I know what would beat me. I'm not telling you what would beat me half the time, but, but I know what would. And uh, people just didn't do it half the time because either A, they were too lazy to swap slash B2, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, I don't know, they just didn't want to. They want to play what they wanted. Uh, or B, uh, they just played in really bad spots. Like, they didn't understand how to play it against the character. Now that he's been out for a, wh a while, I don't really think Ram's, like, that good right now. He's good. Don't get me wrong. Ram's still very good. Um, but, like, not nearly as good as people think he is, I think. I don't know. I, I think there's this very big bias against tanks and, like, being able to actually do anything. And it's crazy because support's insane right now. And people still think support's weak. And it's like, support is literally dead by daylight, but now you're the killer. So, like, I, 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 I think we're just lost cause at this point. This me. I know it's nothing compared to release day Ramatra, so but it's still very annoying. Whenever I see someone play Ramatra, they're sitting in the back line waiting for that one punch man bombo combo sister fister to be ready, then chase me down to the ends of the earth. Maybe a slower ultimate charge would fix him? I don't know though. I, I, I'm just gonna move on. Okay, next. Hi, I'm a disabled gamer, and this is how I play Moira. What's this on dude? Watch too. So, like all my other heroes, movement is done by WASD using my one-handed keyboard and this joystick. To do damage, I left-click on my mouse. Under heal, I blow on the tube. That's so cool. In order to use the orbs, I have to do one of two combinations. To heal with an orb, I have to suck on the tube and then blow on it. 
He's got like combos? In order to do damage of an orb, I have to suck on the tube and then left click. In order to disappear away from enemies, I have to push down on my one-handed joystick. And finally, like all ults, I activate by using my voice macro, Fish. Fish. Drop a like to see more heroes. That's pretty damn cool. I will never not be endlessly impressed with stuff like that. Def didn't make this because I got mad at the game. Oh, <laughs> it's like, I don't, you know. What is the most hated multiplayer game in history? Could it be League of Legends? It's Overwatch 2 and it's not even close. Everybody hates this game to the point that it broke a world record for the most negative reviews in the Steam page. In two days! This game speed ran its downfall. So yeah, in response to that, Blizzard was like, and proceeded to release the PvE game mode without any of the things that they hyped up for and showed for three years. This game is so bad to the point that I got five wins, zero losses in my placement matches, and then I got placed silver. Yeah! All of it was kind of right till the end. What did you expect to place, GM? That's not how placements work. The only game right now that I know of that placements really mean anything is Apex. Because uh, you can skip like entire ranks by good placements. Uh, your placements every season don't give you the magic chance to jump like multiple ranks. That just don't, that don't work like that. Which is why I've always said that placements are dumb. Which is why you don't really have placements anymore unless it's a brand new account. Which then it goes off a quick play MMR. Which is a totally different conversation. But I, it's kind of not wrong. Man, it does make me really sad what happened with Overwatch. I mean, to be honest with you, it, you, can't even, you can't even fault it. A lot of the decisions and a lot of things that happened were really bad. And... You know, there was a lot of people, myself included, that were kind of like screaming, pull the brakes, like it's, we gotta fix this shit, and it just didn't happen, so. Unfortunately, at least to me, it feels like we're kind of back on the bottom again, and uh, we're gonna have to probably sl slowly climb back up again, which is really sad. Hoping it happens, but, I mean, there's like the Microsoft deal that's going through and stuff like that. But hey, honestly, you can't even, you can't even be mad at people. You really can't. Here's one tip for every hero, Ana edition. Tack or send this to an Ana maid that could use some tips. When playing Ana, her sleep and anti-grenade are two of the best support abilities in the game, countering so many different ults and shutting down so many different abilities. So save your anti and sleeps for certain things. For example, if a hawk starts to take a breather, anti him. If a Genji dashes in the air, get ready to sleep him because he's about the nano blade. If Orion's shield breaks, anti him, so on and so forth. Another tip, or I guess you could say common mistake that a lot of so, like, mains very make, basic, but... is just sitting back and healing. Well, yes, this is your job, and us tank and DPS mains love you guys for it, but as an Ana, you can do an insane amount of damage. Perch up on the high ground, scope in, and get to shooting. Unlike That's actually others, pretty good. There's a lot of people that don't, positioning on don't do that. Is far more crucial. This might be like a scalding hot take, but I feel like it's got to the point where... S you, if you get games where it's like both supports are just like giga aggressive and they like only look for damage You just like it's not a fun time as a tank player. I've had games like that where I just go well Either my supports are insane and they'll kill everything or they're not that good and they don't kill anything And my ability to play the game is also out the window, which is tough I've noticed it way more in quick play than in ranked, which is fine. Like quick play is like whatever, but Crucial and you need to be aware I think way more people understand that you need to do damage now than, than in the past. To make sure you're ready for any so I still think these are like very so basic tips. These three tips in your Ana games and your teammates will thank you for it. Tag or send this to an Ana main to help him. It's pretty basic, but hey, you know what? That's okay. Ejati is not broken. The only value that- There was the- Lari is balanced. Wait, this came out on August 12th? Oh, okay. That she brings is the healing pylon, but once it gets destroyed, and it will get destroyed on maps where you have to move around a lot, and you're not playing defensively, her healing is terrible. Because being able to track your hive ability teammates is difficult. You're not hitting them, so what do you have to do? Make up for it in damage, and that's not what you want out of a. So wait a minute. Hold the fuck up. So the ideology here is the character's not broken because the auto heal turret is the only thing that's valuable. And then when that's gone, you don't have the mechanical skill to track your teammates with 120 damage per second beam. So that means that she's not that good, so you have to do damage. Like the thought process is like kind of there. It's like the lights are on, but nobody's home, you know? Like, yeah, you do damage. That's what she's good at. Her pylon is, by the way, we're in the future now. She got nerfed, her pylon got nerfed a bunch. And her ult got nerfed a bunch. 
Uh, and she's still really good. Um, so, uh, history has now shown that it was correct. She was OP. And she's still good, even after the nerfs. Point is, though, that is a wild take. Out of a support character. Sure, it's fun to get a couple kills when you're playing support, but how much value is that really adding to your team? In insane amounts. Uh, Overwatch League players and coaches were talking about when Alari came out that uh, she was doing the most damage and healing in scrims, and it wasn't even close. Like, she was out-damaging everybody, every character in the game, and it wasn't close. And yeah, her ultimate is cool, sure, but there's so many ways to counter it. You can easily get eaten by D.Va, Kiriko cleanse, or you can get slept in the air. Her ult also, if you don't have a D.Va, just basically, or, or a Kiri just wins fights, so like, you have to then play those characters. And then you can manipulate that by playing other characters that are good against those characters, and it's like, you're forcing counter picks to a character that's you, you know what I mean? Like, you have to stay on the, the bad pick because this character's so strong. Like it, The lights are on. The lights are on. I'd rather have something that's a bit more support-based than damage-focused. Overall, you I just had Life Weaver. Life Weaver was literally just a heal bot character and was terrible. I think the reason that people are calling her broken is because it's the hype, she's new, but hey, let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, well, uh, luckily we have history on our side to prove that we're very right about that one, but... I think, no offense to that person, I think it's another small sign of just like, support players always think that, no sorry, not all support players, a lot of support players always think that they're the weakest characters, and it's like, guys, you don't, you, you guys don't know anymore, like, at one point that was true, but that's not true no more. Are you sick and tired of losing comp games all because you can't deal with a Farah? Well, you're in luck, bro. This is for console people. Because I'm here to help. I'm gonna give you three different heroes that absolutely destroy Farah. Oh. Number one, Echo. It's sort of like fighting flyer with flyer. That is true. Flyer. You have to fight flyer with flyer. Echo's a lot more mobile, can fire a lot more shots at far while she's in the air, and it's a lot harder for far to hit Echo out of the sky. Number two, Reaper. I know it sounds weird because Reaper uses shotguns, but if you can get close enough and you can teleport and wraith walk really close to Farah, it only takes three or four shots to get her out. It's actually so ridiculous, I think they're trolling. If the third one's Reinhardt, they're trolling. They're out of the sky. And number three, Junkrat. People may tell you that Junkrat is completely useless. Wait, they found another one. Wait, a minute, hang on. Echo was true, though. Wait, I don't understand, because Echo was true. Against Farah, but they're wrong. A good, accurate Junkrat could hit Farah once with a bomb and then hit him with a mine to finish him off very, very easily. And if all else fails, you throw your tire at her. Your tire, if you didn't know, can climb walls to get high enough and close enough to Farah to knock her out of the game. I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with these three picks, so comment down below the people you choose to. Oh, it's comment bait. It's comment bait. I hate those. We're not supposed to be here? Wait, what? The GM3 game? Huh? What? We're in GM games. This tank is a GM, this GM3. What the f I might have miscalculated our placements. Yeah, I was like, oh, we're gonna get placement plaque or diamond. You know, I was thinking on the low end. GM! GM this doesn't mean we're gonna get GM. To be fair, GM3 is very different than GM1. You're still fine. <laughs> I will shit bricks. <laughs> you shout. Oh no, we're in GM lobbies. They're calling player abilities. Okay. This doesn't happen in Diamond. <laughs> the enemy life weaver? Yeah. Top 500, 395. Currently. What the f? What the f? Doing a enemy Alari top 500 390. We weren't in yeah, that. That if this is beginning of season, that was pretty low. So, like, it's GM3 GM actually lobby. makes sense. We were in a top 500 lobby, yeah, but it was beginning of season, probably. Let me check 8 30. Uh, not that early to the season, to be honest with you. Well, that actually probably was GM1 then. Wow, the supports probably were actually GM1 then. Never mind, because GM1 is the first one that hits. Uh, GM1, I believe. Out of, uh, like, the bottom of top 500 becomes GM1. It's, like, the fastest. Like, Tank, I don't even think it has... I think Tank's still, like, GM4 or, or 5 right now. So, actually... But it might have been a couple GM1 supports, which is funny. Oh my god, Master.
Master's tank, Master's damage, top 500 support, 395. Don't take it away from them. Let them have their moment. How am I taking it away? We're... What? I'm, I'm telling you how the system works. Like, you don't, you understand there's people at the beginning of the season that, like, were top 10 and they were GM5 because they played in 150 games at the beginning of the season. That's not taking any of the way. Like, they changed the way the system works this season. So, what? That's that's so weird. It's, it's like, I'm saying on someone else's behalf. I didn't steal top 500 from them. Like, wow.